address a couple things. I very rarely get to speak, and I um, unfortunately always get put at the last slot at this conference. So uh, before I actually got into my talk, I wanted to address a couple things in our community. Um, last year, I gave a talk at this point that we need to change our community. So I wanted to take this chance before my actual talk to address some of the issues that I'm sure we all have questions about. I'm sure we were all hoping that Eric or Brendan would mention certain words that they didn't. Um, so I want to I want to just talk about those real quick. The first one would be the obvious elephant in the room from a leaked email with pure speculation, and that being Dart. Dart is awesome. I think we as developers, as JavaScript developers, as web developers, should embrace Dart. And I'm not saying give up every give up JavaScript and just go running to Dart land because we don't even know what Dart land is. Everything we've heard about at this point is pure speculation. The web is a massive place. Historically speaking, if you look at the track records, the only thing that has happened when new languages crop up is that JavaScript gets better. So don't go spreading negativity about Dart. Don't even worry about it until you actually know what it is. Speculation doesn't help anything. Fighting over speculation helps even less. So what I have to say about Dart is cool, let's see what it looks like. If it's great, and we all embrace it, then it's great because we all embrace it. If it's not great and it ends up not working, well, we'll just merge it in like we did Tamarin, and everything will be great and we'll all move on. So let's not get all wrapped around the axle on speculation. If you want, if you want to take away to let you sleep better at night, uh, is Tom Robinson here? Or did he go drinking already? Ah, there. Tom had a wonderful accidental quote, is what I'll call it. Um, Tom has experience, if you don't know him, he helped write, he helped author Objective-J, which is a language on top of JavaScript. Um, and his quote was, it is a lot to ask of people to learn and to use a whole new language. That's a pretty interesting thing when you think about it. Even though we all learn new languages, it is a lot to ask. So bear that in mind with Dart. Let's see what the world has to offer. I encourage us to embrace new languages. Mozilla has Rust. They're doing amazing things. Google has possibly Dart dash it's something beginning with D. So let's not be afraid of these new languages. Let's embrace them. Let's see what they have to offer. And as JavaScript developers, let's see what they can do to benefit our language and make our lives better. And that leads me to my next topic, the open web. I have a unique position. Um, I get to hang out with Alex Russell and Brendan Eich and have dinner with some crazy people. It's a unique position for me because I'm not a browser vendor. I actually don't really have much stake in this game. I'm a startup founder who helps nursing homes and assisted living, which probably some people in this room, the mind um, The benefit I have is that I get to look at this web, this magical place, what all of you are doing, and say, wow. The battling, the, not battling, the, the, the energy, the excitement, the creativity, the innovation, the invention that's going on in our space is so incredibly amazing. When we started in 2009, the world was a lot different place. And it's because we live in an open web these days where there isn't a monarchy instilled and there are multiple browsers and there are people pushing the fold and we are doing crazy things that sometimes seem counterproductive. But in the end, this is the web. This is the magic that we all came to this for. So, hooray, open web! <laughs> Which goes to my next talk, or next quick button um, item, uh, promote JS. Last year we launched that here, and we've done an amazing job. If you haven't looked at Are We First yet, we have managed to get every single search term we were targeting on the first page of a Google search index. That's pretty freaking impressive. But, as Christian Heilman mentioned, that's not nearly enough. How many of you participated in the doc sprint that was going on this weekend? That's embarrassing, okay? I want everyone, as a mission, for as much as you want to go drinking tonight, the cost for drinking tonight is going onto the MDN and modifying a dock. Doesn't have to be that much, just try it. Break into it, enjoy it, go for it. It's a shared document repository, it's a wiki. Anyone can go into it. You can add stuff about, about Google specific components. You can add stuff about Microsoft specific components. You can add stuff about Opera specific components. And of course, Mozilla would like if you added stuff about MDN or Mozilla as well. So use this, let this be our center point. Let this be a place where we can all come together and we can all agree on documentation. 
The next piece is uh, something that I really want to inspire everyone here. When you leave this place, let this not be a single point in time. Let this be something that has changed you. Let the presentations today be something that you carry and inspires you, and that you bring back to your local communities. After the last two, three JS comps that we've done in each continent at this point, it's been amazing to see the explosion of different local user groups and meetups that have popped up, and that is wonderful. How many of you out there run or attend a local meetup? A big round of applause to all of you. Another cool thing and a cool statistic is uh, this weekend we've been able to introduce or really push the boundaries of JavaScript to over a thousand people. We have a group assembled here. There's a jQuery conf going on in Boston, I want to say. It's either Boston or San Francisco. And that's a lot of people that are using JavaScript and coming to conferences. That's very impressive. So we need something to really brandish ourselves. And we, we've been subversive a little bit. And we've been giving out stickers and doing these sorts of things. And JavaScript's never had an identity. We had a rhino for a little bit, but that doesn't really seem so good right now that we're kicking tail and being really fast. So you know what? You may hate this logo, and that's cool. But I'm going to say, let's just use it. It's simple. It works. It doesn't really appeal to any browser vendor. It's awesome. It's our logo. It's on a lot of laptops already and a lot of cell phones. So I'm making this fully publicly available in raw format. Um, HTTP colon slash slash jsconf.com slash js.eps. If you want to use it, great. If you don't, great. It's up to you. We'll call it a community logo or not. It, it, it's just an offer, and that's my offer. So I'm actually going to get into my talk, I promise you. Um, that's sort of my overview of the world. I want to reset the, everything and move forward. Um, thank you, Ryder, for the tweet. I wish that hadn't popped up. Um, uh, I'd like to have Jed Schmidt and John David Dalton come to the stage. No. Well, Applaud for both of them. I've got two chairs here, one for each of you. No, you can sit down. Yeah, just sit down. You've got new seats. Yeah, sit down, sit down. These guys are great guys, so they're going to help me out with my presentation. So we're at the end of JS Conf, and everyone's upbeat, and they're ready to go change the world. And how many of you are ready to just go out of here and drink and change the world and go, woo, sort of like Malty was dancing last night? Very, yeah. Exactly. I don't get to speak very much. In fact, the last time I actually spoke was in Berlin at JS Conf EU. It's a unique position to be a conference organizer and not be able to ever really talk. So when I do get a chance to speak, I'm going to talk about things. I'm going to talk to you directly about the issues and problems that I see with our community. If you hate those kind of talks, I'm sorry. We had a whole day full of technical stuff. Um, I'm not going to just offer my perspective on what's wrong. I'm going to try to give solutions. They may be horrible solutions because I am not perfect. I don't even adhere to all the solutions I suggest. I am not a person who actually should even be here making these suggestions. But I'm just trying to start the discussion so people like yourselves who are better to solve these solutions can go forward with them. I haven't really ever, I haven't always been like this. I used to speak about technical content, node serial port, stuff like that. But all that changed when I, unfortunately you didn't see the video, but um, all that changed when I watched and witnessed the birth of my little daughter. Um, it is an impressive moment and really something that changes your entire world. Fatherhood has an amazing way of kicking you in the ass and helping you to see really what matters in this world. And so it's because of that reason that I'm here to talk to you today. On my desk at work is a little metal plaque that engraved on it is the words, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? I'm going to say that again. If you wouldn't mind just playing along with me and close your eyes when I say it, I'd greatly appreciate it. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? A co 
coworker of mine gave this to me, this plaque to me when I was uh, just out of college. Young kid, I thought it was worthless. Threw it in the bottom of my desk drawer. Pretty much assumed it was a tchotchke that I'd never use. And then over the course of a couple years, I pulled it back out and I put it on my desk and I'd look at it and I kept thinking, you know, there's something to that. What if we couldn't fail? What would we do? And so I ended up deciding to dedicate my life to that sort of, that very simple saying, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? I right now run a startup. I throw seven conferences a year. I have one hell of a job as a, a flower delivery guy because my wife runs a floral design business. And I have the incredible honor and privilege to be raising a beautiful baby girl. I do all this because I kind of throw caution and a lot of good advice to the wind. I try to live life to the fullest. And as most of you probably know, if you've been out at the parties, I generally tell sleep to, you know, sleep be damned. Um, and just try to take life all in. One thing has plagued me. When you do, when you live this sort of life, when you say, what happens if I could do anything I want and I will not fail? You put yourself out there in great risk. Entrepreneurs, this culture that we live in is very entrepreneurial focused. We are risk taking people. We have to be. We are unlike any other industry in the world. We can take nothing, open up our laptop, create magic in under a day. In 3D. In 3D, too. <laughs> By a show of hands, how many of you run a company? Or have run a company? Or work in a company of, or of less than 20? Okay, how many of you have open sourced software or hardware? Awesome. All of you are risk takers that raised your hand. And those that didn't, you are risk takers as well at heart. And I know it, otherwise you wouldn't be here. I mean, the party last night was a big risk. <laughs> um, and being a risk taker means you have opened yourself up to a great deal of exposure. You've put yourself out there. When you open source something, when you put something out in the public eye, that's a part of yourself, a part of your soul, a part of your spirit that is out there in the open. Most people don't know this, but JSConf was a huge mistake. When I, yeah, woo, when I started JSConf, my wife and I, um, we didn't start it thinking, hey, let's create an amazing conference. We started it accidentally with me at a bar saying, I want to go to a JavaScript conference. I didn't find one. So we set up ticket sales. We sold four tickets over two months. As those of you who know conference or who have organized a conference, four tickets in two months is not a good thing. We were having to sign on the hotel where we did the first JS Conf and we were putting our entire lives at stake. Meanwhile, on Hacker News, everyone was trashing us because we have no idea what we're doing. We're idiots. This is a horrible idea. We signed the, the lease on the hotel. At the same time, we marked it as sold out. Or we were about to sign a lease, we marked the conferences sold out because I was trying to pull out and save face. I was going to refund all the tickets and walk away. I share this story with you because a lot of people think JSConf comes naturally. And we put a lot of risk into it. And we, we do everything we can to make it as crazy as possible because we believe that's what you want and that's what we want to give to you. When we marked it as sold out, everyone bought a ticket and yay! So luckily I didn't get a divorce after that, which was a great thing. <laughs> but it, it's something that, that people have asked me numerous times, how did you come up with this idea? And it's complete and total dumb luck. We are risk takers. We are all risk takers. And that means we put our souls out there and we put ourselves out there. And I quickly mentioned it, but we have failed each other in doing this. We as developers, as designers, as friends have failed one another. I have watched negativity, hate. No, I know. This is just a listen, don't watch. Um, this is planned. Negativity, hate, sarcasm completely and totally dominate our community and our world. And I am just as guilty as everybody else. So I'm not coming here as somebody who's doing it right. 
We, we allow this to happen so much so that we even have words for it, colloquialisms for it, called trolling. Uh, you guys have heard of this? Um, by a show of hands, how many of you have experienced being trolled? That is a lot of people. When you experience this, a part of your soul, a part of you, a part of your energy dies. And I hate that. Because all that this leads to is stifling innovation, preventing invention, ruining our risk-taking ability, but most of all, it kills our ability to be happy developers. And it's not random people doing it. It's ourselves doing it to ourselves. Many say they love JSConf because we come together as a family. We may joke with one another and we may rib each other, but we know that we're all friends and, and we leave better friends and almost like a family. That's why we do the group photo at the end. It sickens me every time I leave JSConf. We are here with so much energy and so much happiness and really we leave wanting to change the world and then we'll get home and we'll open up Hacker News or we'll open up Reddit or we'll open up IRC or we'll open up GitHub Issue 28 and we'll see this trolling, this evil, this negativity, this battling all over the place. And it really makes you say, why should I keep doing it? Every time after a JSConf, I look to Laura and I say, I'm not doing this ever again. I can't bring myself to go through this again. And I'm sure that those of you who have raised your hand have felt that way at some point in time. I've watched social networks rise and disproportionately destroy our social human networks, our friendships, our colleagues. The fake anonymity of the web has been turned into a platform for promoting self-worth at the cost of everything and everyone that runs contrary to that person. When our friends launch something or release something into this firing squad, the best we can do is we can con console them with words like, you have to have a tough skin, or haters gonna hate. Today, I'm gonna call bullshit on that. We need to stop blaming the victims. We need to understand the risk that others take and understand that we will or we are all taking similar risks as well. Last year, I made a call to improve our community. This year, I would like to make a new call, that we improve ourselves and we be the change that we want to see in the world. Following along from last year, how many of you code in PHP? You still code. Have. <laughs> how many of you have coded in Ruby? Python? Perl? C, Algol. <laughs> How many of you think any of that matters? So why do we have battles? These are tools, they are not religions. We need to understand that and we need to believe in that. We need to commit to what is right and not what feels good. We are a family. Here, outside, in our community, we are a family of developers. When I talk to people about the magic that is JSConf, I'm not talking about the amazing food, I'm not talking about the crazy parties, I'm not talking about the beer available whenever you want it. What I'm talking about is that sense of when you leave, and it's almost like you're leaving grandma's house, and your brothers and sisters are there, and you've met everyone, and God, it feels so good. And at any moment, you could call up Nikolai and say, dude, how do I make the Russian? And he'll help you out. He'll probably ship it to you. <laughs> but I'm not coming here just to say, this is what's wrong, peace. I'm here to try to offer some solutions, or at least ideas. Like last year, my intent is not to solve all of the world's problems, all of the time, but at least to give you all a spark that you can light up fire with and go home and maybe we can all change this. So here's the first of my suggestions. I'm gonna call it Kids in the Back. And this comes from discussing with the man back there and a man who isn't here, uh, Brendan and Alex, Alex Russell. Those two like to have discussions. People like to get involved in their discussions. So what I made the suggestion of is when they get into one of these discussions, 
I'm gonna suggest kids in the back if it gets above three thread balance. What that means is, hey, just like if you're driving in a car and you have the kid in the back and you and your spouse are driving, driving, you know, I don't really like McDonald's. Well, I love McDonald's. That animosity, that fighting, the kids see that and they learn this. And so we as, as role models, and we don't even know we're role models, but we are role models. We need to understand that there are kids in the back who are watching us, seeing what we do, thinking that's acceptable behavior. And we need to discipline ourselves to say, there are kids in the back, why don't we go out, out of band communication and talk directly? I don't think that's asking too much. That if we have something that gets very heated, you take it off of a public channel. Then people aren't fighting with pride. They don't have to show themselves and be better just to pound their chests. Call each other up. We do have these things called telephones. They still work. I tried it. It doesn't work with the video, but it does to Paul's mom. And if you come to an agreed upon solution, then post that back up. Because you know what? Resolution is great. If you don't come up with a resolution, just let the three comments sit. The internet disappears very quickly, but it does not forget. The other is a discussion of public versus private. We should honor, respect, and be very positive in public. The two gentlemen up here do absolutely amazing things, and that's why I wanted them both to come up. They are some of the best people that we have in the community. They're pushing boundaries. They're doing amazing things. So thank you, and thank you. You guys can go back if you want. Or you can stay up here, it's up to you. You guys can go back to your seat if you want, or you can stay here, it's up to you. I just wanted to... I have great seats. All right, good. Now I know that in JavaScript we don't really have a concept of private variables, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna closure the next. Um, negative comments, negative discussions, anything that might be negative, we can just take those and do them private. Let's separate those bands of communication. When you talk to someone privately about an issue, when you come up and say, hey, I have an issue with something that you said, you'll be quite impressed at how much better the communication happens. If you do it on the internet, it always goes bad. The next suggestion, be willing to stand up to the haters. And I'm not talking about the person who's getting hated on. I'm talking about instead of telling our friends that they gotta suck it up and deal with it, be there to say, hey, I see that you have a problem. Why don't we talk about it instead of you and them? I'm much more better because I'm not connected to that. But I, this is my friend. Let's talk. Every attack, every negative comment is one more thing preventing us from taking risks, from living out the earlier quote, from living life as if we could not fail. And remember, and think back to when you had your eyes closed. What could you do if you knew you couldn't fail? A wise man once said on this continent, um, his name was Theodore Roosevelt. He was a president of the United States. He, he gave a speech called the Citizenship in the Republic in 1910. I'm gonna read this because I wanna get it exactly right, but I want you just to listen to it. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds. He who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat.
We have to stop the negativity. We have to change our world. We have to start by changing ourselves. If there is one thing you take away from this talk, if there's one thing you do, please do this. When you see someone taking the risk, when you see someone being the man or woman in the arena, when their face is bloody and marred and dirty, stand up next to them, support them. Talk to the people who are coming at them. Talk to the critics. But do it, and this is key, do it with positivity and not more hate. Come together as friends and not as enemies. Because the person in the arena is already fighting a battle. And if you address the other person, and not Dimitri, I'm, I, I, he's just there. Um, <laughs> if you address the other person as a friend with positivity, like, hey, do you wanna go get a beer? Because that seemed a little bit harsh. Is something the matter? Um, we could talk it out, no worries. Every time I've done this with someone, I've found out that what, was, what happened was somebody was negative on them, or someone said their project sucked, or they wrote a, long, uh, a wrong line of code. And it perpetuates and spins the cycle. But one thing I've learned is that if we stand up and we say, hey, it's okay. That line of code was awesome. Let's not go fighting on anyone else. Once you do that, we can turn the tide back and we can bring happiness, innovation, invention, and pride, and most importantly, our happiness and fulfillment into this industry. This will be very hard to do the first couple times you attempt it, because most people stand up and, and just want to be negative when they want to be negative. But if you do this, if you do this for a colleague, then you're doing it for all the rest of us as well. And in return, I can ensure you that we will be doing it for you just the same. And so I'd like to wish you a good night and thank you very much for being part of this family. <laughs>